graffiti is trying to impress people you don't know, <laughs> who don't even like you, mm. don't even give a shit about you, for what? You get nothing out of it. They don't even care. You might get a little flame on your Instagram. That doesn't mean anything. Because when it comes down to it, no, no one's there for you. So why are you doing it? But people are like, flames, that's sick. And it's like, oh, man, those letters, come on, a five-year-old can do that. I'm not cu- trying to cuss people, but like, if you're writing for 30 years, come on, get some basic letter structure. The Killer Killer Podcast. Killer Killer Official Com. You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Instagram UK Frontline. Yo, Nolan Poland Records for underground classics. NolanPolandRecords.com. Beatbox created. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. This, of course, was recorded ahead of last weekend's events. I can't believe I'm saying it, but I'd like to send a uh, massive rest in peace to who tragically passed away last week and speaking personally you were more than a graffiti writer my brother in a short space of time I got to know you we uh, shared many great times and uh, uh, you were a close friend there were so many more people out there that you touched and um, a scene which uh, is honouring you by the day um, for all of your work within the graffiti scene in the UK um You are an advocate of the platform and a fan of the podcast, so speaking on myself on behalf of the team and all your closest friends and family, rest in peace. Big shout out to Pirate.com, 24-7 music podcasts and dance studios all across the UK. Hold tight, strainstation.co.uk and a big shout out to nopolandrecords.com. Oh dear, if you checked out the Kellervision app, you know what it is. It's the street culture sporting art platform. Free download app, iPhone, Android, uh, mixes, DJ, podcast, yo, it's all there. It's all there. Um, we're in the house with a gentleman that used to roam the Northwest as one hell of an all star, along with a, an all star cast. Um, originally TU, um, and then transferring from those uh, humble Northwest beginnings into, well, actually, he's over in uh, Perth at the moment, in Australia. He's uh, AS Crew's finest avia inside the place. What are you saying? Yeah, you're right, mate. How are you going? I'm good. How are you? I'm good, man, yeah. People are going to know about you, man, like in the new northwest, north Weezy area. You can probably hear that you're in Perth right now because, you know, a lot of graffiti writers, they kind of orbit in a... Like we were saying just before, like, Yeah, yeah, a lot of people moving out. Actually, we was chatting to one guy yesterday. He's like, oh, yeah, where are you living now? I've not seen you in a little bit. I was like, yeah, I've been overseas for 10 years. 10 years? It was away. I just thought I might have got a bit old and just calmed down a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, Never yeah, calm down, just a, move. A decade. It's a, a long time. A decade. And I was travelling for a bit as well, so... If you haven't seen me up in London for a while, that's, that's the reason why. I'm still active, but, mm. you know, just different locations. I remember that throw up very well. Talking, like, late 90s into early noughties, there may be some. But, yeah, these were informative years for me coming into London from south. Yeah. Like I said, I was predominantly northwest mostly, but I yeah. did go all city. Um, mostly pentagon mm. and throw-ups. Um, because I'd never claimed to be king of every line, nothing like that. I, 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 I won't lie, like, but I was out there. Um, and I'd also go to weird towns. Mm. And um, oh, fuck, I've got so many stories. Yeah, it's about um, to get deep, people. Deep into the abyss, you know, the Australian deep sea. You know what I mean? Yeah, there, there's a lot. But where do you want to start, man? There's, there's, there's Let's take so it back. Much. Let's go back to those days of early adopting of graffiti in London. Because, we, like I said at the top, we're talking to you as well. So, you know, there's a lot going on here. Yeah, OK. Um, well, the TU connection is uh, I grew up in Railway as a kid. And um, fuck, there's a million stories there. We were dodgy little shits. Um, if you know Railway, have you seen Kingsman, where he jumps over the top of the estate mm-hmm. to the other estate? Mm-hmm. It's like a 10-storey drop. We were like nine years old and we jumped that. What? I wouldn't go near that shit now. I'll kill my kid if he'd done that. Like, we'd done dangerous shit. And I have flashbacks of walking across the top of... You know, you go under the garages, yeah. you drive in, that big yeah. massive wall. We were yeah. walking across that. What? 
Yeah, for um, those of the, you guys don't know really way, I mean, this this is an industrial, it's a very brutalistic kind of oh, architecture. Famous. Yeah, it's, it's legendary. It's the kind of thing that, you know, a lot of photographers, especially from outside London, would drool over, like, loads of campaigns that have been done there. But there was an undertone there, and still is predominantly, of, you know, well, not in the same way, but it was TU territory, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Um, we actually, like I said, we were only kids at the time, so we weren't involved in all that shit, but we were... We started shoplifting and we just, just got up to and go. One time we all um, broke into one of the, the new buildings up by the shops and half the kids in the estate were running down the street with washing machines and tumble dryers and we're just getting in little um, trolleys and anything we can. Like we all, the whole estate, like all these little kids under 10 years old had new washing machines. Like it, it was mad like that. That's mad, you know, under 10. <laughs> yeah. What are you doing with them? <laughs> Broke into the to mum's house, isn't it? <laughs> sports centre, raided that, the community centre. We had um there was a abandoned like council building on the estate as well, where we all kind of broke into and um we'd go around nicking all the doormats of everyone's everyone's uh house and we'd made a little carpet, we had the couch in there, there was a fireman's pole, some of the kids uh robbed the youth centre, so it was literally boxes of sweets. Um, See, this isn't new. I mean, England's getting this, like, well, especially London, they're getting this kind of opportunistic uh, young youthful entitlement of raiding shops in, in Oxford Circus. But this isn't a new trend. This is Nah, like, oh, there's, there's endless stories. Like, we were, we were doing dangerous shit. My little brother, they climbed up the, the lift shaft. They were probably about seven, eight years old, maybe nine. They Another guy, he went down a, um, the bin chute on a, off one of the buildings into a skip, broke his legs. Whoa. My, my modern brothers, he was on the train line in the city's flying past him. He would have been eight, nine years old. Like, dangerous shit. Um, is that you for wisdom? Just oh, just how we were. Like, it was a bit, bit wild. Why is that? My mum's Scottish. <laughs> She's a crazy <laughs> fucker. Really? Did that, did that yeah. influence the kind of attitude that you had? No, oh, it was wild then. I don't know. Eighties. I'm listening to the stories of other guys that are on this, and I listen to every every episode of the Graph Guys, um, and it seems like all the guys from the nineties have a very similar backstory, mm. where you, you'd go out and you'd roam the streets and you'd get on the train and you get everything for free because mm. um, you had no money. You just confiscated what you needed. Yeah, you know, um, and you were a bit lawless and you get into fights and meet writers on the train. Mm. Um, oh, there's so much stories, like yeah. so much, and yeah, it's just a different world back then. Like today, it's a spoiled generation where you swipe left, like I don't want it next. But like that's a whole other story as well. Like mm. we're too spoiled nowadays. Yeah, it was purer back then, and I miss it. Um, yeah, I miss it too. But back to back to the TU thing, um, we were like, I don't know how old we were, like again eight, nine, ten, or whatever, and uh, Steam and the Carver Boys were painting. Big up Steam, to you, yeah, come on. Big up to you, Steam. Big up Exit, big up all the guys, original Dons. All of them, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, we saw them and then um, they were painting and there was, one of them went to my little brother. I was like, are oh, you fucking telling me I'm going to kill you? He would have been about eight years old. <laughs> but it was like, yeah, we were up to no good ourselves. Mm. Um, but that's my first memory and I remember, always remember the, the Rays, I think it was Rays and, no, Rhyme and Steam. Yeah. That mad st- uh, pink and blue piece, which everyone will know, that was my first real intro- contribution, like influence. It must have been um, mind blowing because people talk about that piece like significantly. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you look at it now, I thought, oh, yeah, it's all right. Like, it was crazy. And you, you see better pieces and styles now because the world's crazy now. But as a kid, like, it was just an explosion of colours. Mm. Um, and then I never really got into graph for years after that. Like, um, I didn't get in until like 98. But like, we'd always be doing something. We'd always be stealing stuff, riding the lines. And then, um, then I moved out to, to Wembley back in 91 and um, we had a local sports centre and we'd nick all the sports goods. So my back garden, we had two fireside goals, netball ring, uh, javelin. Someone even said I had a pole vault in there. <laughs> a gymnastic, all, like, we had everything, we just stole everything. Yo, clap the maniacs, you know. <laughs> yeah, and we get on the train and we go to like, other parts of London. And Did you just shot that stuff though? Nah, you just, just, kept just it. for fun. Just kept it. Yeah, we want to play football. We'll just get the fight. We had three five side goals, like proper full length ones. Stop it. Yeah, and we just take them on the pitch. We just had spare because we could. We didn't need it. And then we play. Uh, we had javelins. I always remember like we had this little um, bin. You know, you set fire to the little barrel, yeah. throwing javelins into it. 
Um, let's go nicking sometime. Like once I stole like a jacket and my little brother was, fuck, he must have been about six or something outside. I was yeah. in there for ages, stole a, stole a jacket from a shop. Really? Felt a bit guilty for yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Uh, trainers and stuff. Um, Does guilt play a part in it? Because, you know, I'm a well-to-do man, you understand? Like, you know, I wouldn't do anything like that. You could give a bid. But, you know, generally as you get older, do you, is there anything like that kind of touches the heartstrings of, yeah, actually, that was a bit of a... Nowadays, yeah, it's like you tell your kids, like, like don't go near that shit. But when you're young, you don't give a shit. Like, mm. like you love it. It's, mm. it's, there's a lot of stuff. Like, uh, you're in the moment, even drinking when you're younger, you're wild, like, you just get smashed. And yeah. people say, oh, you're dry, drying your sorrows away. It's like... No, I loved it. I loved mm. getting smashed. Mm. It was a destructive outlet. But, you know, when you look deeper when you're older, I thought, oh, yeah, there's, there could be some stuff you're escaping. But, no, it's, when you're that age, it's fun. There's, Yo, alcohol you don't is regret des- anything. Alcohol is designed to make you escape. Like, I, 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 don't, I don't know what people think that alcohol is designed for, but I can't see any positive. Yeah, this is designed for, get, you know, cash take, taking your cares away on some shit, you know? Yeah, it numbs you, but it also... Um, you lose your inhibitions and you say what you want to say. Mm. So one of the one of the um, <laughs> sayings for AS was alcoholics because we were pissheads. Really? Yeah, we used to get smashed all the time. And if you, anyone that knows me, I always had about three bottles in my hand. Really? Yeah, I'd, I'd finish work and I'd get like a bottle of spirits, um, a massive bottle of a mixed drink and a big bottle of cider, and that's just a train journey. What? Just to get where we we're going. Sounds fucking great. Not that I can die. That's great fun. Fucking great. But now we weren't like like, ho- like hobos just falling on the street, pissed or anything like like that was just the, f- the fuel for the fire, mm. just to get where we we're going. And then we bounce around the city, and then um, end up wherever. Mm. And uh, oh, fuck, I got just flashbacks. Train surfing. And one time I was on the. This is going like, to be a great podcast. It might be jumping all over the place. Yeah, yeah, jump all over the place. You know, like but like train hopping. Go for it. One time we were at Farringdon, me and a couple of mates, and um. I, we stole KFC chairs just for fun and like whatever fruit and thrown at people train surf from Farringdon with a chair on my hands on the back of the train on the met line going through the tunnels with a chair like on the outside of the train <laughs> what? not inside I was hanging off with a chair like hanging off my arm about like, two fingers holding on and drinking beers like that go, literally going through the tunnels no yeah you'd have ripped your and arm then, off nah nah it's alright like, yeah. I'm not don't no one do it no kids do it but like yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it was pretty safe like if you hold on really yeah, it's just like standing on a bus, but Mad. I don't want no young kids to start doing that. No, 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 no. These are all nice little stories, you understand? We don't condone any of this, no. uh, not on this platform. No. Pick a dealer um, line, that's got an alarm on it, in case you are uh, a bit loose and yeah. want to try it out, but just be safe whatever you do. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's loads of stuff. Um, where do we jump back to? Um, teenage years, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, so we used to, like, we just hung about the area, we'd steal stuff. Um, we used to make, like, Tents on the field across the road. We just obtained loads of random shit and we'd camp out there. Mm. We just like, hung around the streets, really. Mm. Um, and back, yeah, back to your saying about, um, like, I guess, parents and stuff. It was a, a different world back then. Yeah. We were never home, whereas nowadays kids are on their gadgets all the time. Mm. You know, we go home and then we come back and there'd like, be a trail of bread and milk to our house because you just come back and like oh it's bread my mum might need that for the morning there's about 20 loaves of bread all the way down the street really yeah and then my mum said oh make sure you go she'll send us out for stuff sometimes as well like my auntie's as well um, she'll wear shopping because get me that lipstick get me that one there yeah, like she, really there's been the a few shopping little ones list like that. yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, they're, they're not but they were never into that kind of stuff but because we were little scallywags I yeah, guess yeah, yeah. They'd, um, if you're going to do it put anyway. a few requests in yeah. But my dad, he obviously, he hated it with passion. Like, he hates graph. Mum and dad were together? They'd been together? They were, yeah, yeah. Um, till like, 01 or something like that. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he lives in Chicago now, so I go over there sometimes. Nice. Got a few connections out there. Yeah, but you, place. Nothing better than that. But, you know, I mean, and like I said at the top, you you know, you're Perth, a Perth citizen at the moment. But let's not go too far off track, because I, I feel like AES as a crew was, was it's almost like, it was it was an organisation of loads of different writers that were put. Yeah. You know, nowadays it's kind of a given. But although AS was like everywhere, there was this unification. Uh, kind of the way the way I started AS is um, like obviously I knew a lot of writers. I got out, I went out there, blah blah blah. But um, off, and you, when you start crews, you like you find different names and all that. So for me, All Stars was like, right, that's a good name. But um, I kind of treated it like. Uh, I guess like a like a scout. Mm. 
Mm, rather yes. than like when you first write people like yeah part of the crew part of the crew that's what it was like back then but then after I thought I choose the best from each crew mm. but they have to be like alright I have to be mates so I'm not just going to put anyone in it or whatever you have to paint together and hang out together mm. so we got like we got loads of like LB in it um, uh, who else IT mm -hmm. HTB Easy Riders see all um, over the country all yeah. over the country. I, so I, let's I, go into the names. Who, who's it? Because for people that are from out, out of UK, let's, let's yep. get into it. Because I know we're going to be hitting Perth and Chicago, that's for sure. Tell us, uh, tell right, us I'll, I'll who's throw in. a load of names out yeah, for do you. It. So the first, originally it was ADS, Artistic Dons. And then I thought, now nah, I'm going to start my own new one. Uh, so we had like um, a different Flash, mm -hmm. um, Matt Care, PK, Skits, uh, Devil. But they were just like, uh, and Def. Again, that's another common mm -hmm. name. But they were just like the local boys. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, no, I'm, I'm making my own new thing. So I've got uh, OPEC, UNIT, SMAR, SERCA, SUCCA. Uh, so that was our first slot. But then obviously we interacted with like, a lot of the LB boys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, so we had like... I shouldn't even be naming some of these people actually because they don't deserve the credit. Okay. Uh, anyway, that's another thing. Not everyone's loyal. but uh, And then we had some of the IT, like SWAT Zemo, um, I have to think of areas. There were so many people in it. Draw, draw was in it. Draws. Yeah, yeah, he's in it now. Yeah, he's one of the young ones. He's good mates. Yeah, big up with my draws, little brother. Mate. All day. Uh, killing it. Yeah. Uh, we've got obviously like mine and banter killing uh -huh. it. Uh -huh. uh, Glasgow boys. You've got Acme, Eject, Views, Chi, Boom. Rogue. Mm -hmm. Acme's uh, a Spore, OG man. Ooh. Yeah. Um, X two. You got the Milton Keynes crew. Uh, you got Cade and Mega up there as well. Nice. Uh, you got clone out in Thailand, Cheezo in Barcelona. You know what I'm saying you got the uh, the Perth crew now in Australia. Uh, Sewer, Tex, Gimme, Bose, Scope, um, and a few others wow. on top of my head. But over the years, them, yeah. there's been about eighty people, eighty or maybe more. But you got different different names as well. People changing. You got obviously Force is another one. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's loads. Um, as we said earlier, um, like people, when they hang out with you, everyone wants to be in it. Oh, Young Zest and Alone and Clue, they were the young ones coming through. Wow. Coming out in their school uniforms and we take them out of the tracks. Yeah, take this can, run with it. Yeah, uh, yeah there's like literally a lot of people. There's uh, like everyone I forgot, obviously you're included. The way yeah. I see things is if you see the word AS, it's a shout out to everyone in the crew. That's how AS is for me. So... In a way, it's a recruitment thing. Like, if we paint together, we're cool together, there's talent. All right, it's a unified thing. Psycho and Kent, another mm -hmm. one. All of you included. Um, so it's scattered everywhere, but it is unified. It's all through me. It's not just like, oh, you have says, you have says, you put whoever in it, and then no one knows anyone. Yeah. It's all through me. So I'm treating this like a business mm. where I'm, I'm trying to link people like, oh, you're going to this town, I'll hook you up, I'll hook you up. Yeah, because like you said, there's IT, there's Br that's Brighton, obviously, Big Up Spire as well. West London. Yeah, West, yeah exactly. West. Yeah. Uh, again, we've got like Close, he was just messaging me, he's down with a crew. Yeah. Can't, there's a lot of guys, so sorry if I forget Easy Riders, people. again, like North, North that's and the North. That's a whole other yeah. thing. Easy yeah. Riders are absolute kings. Big time. Like, Massively. I can't wait to get up there and chat to these guys. I'll be seeing them tomorrow. Oh, yeah. Don't yeah. worry, Poor yeah. Word, so it's saying it's... I'm moving around. Yeah, yeah. So it's a unified thing. And um, another thing with graphers is you always lose your photos. Mm. I've lost shitloads. Just more stories coming to my head. I'll come to that in a minute. Um, so what I've realised when I lost my hard drive, crashed, back up everything. Mm. So everything I find online now, um, I save copies of. So I've got all the crew. I've got all the albums out of Petal Order. Mm. So it might be tips for anyone watching. This might be a good idea for you guys to do. And always have at least two backups, minimum two backups. Mm. Yeah, so I've got it all documented into different folders categorised. Um, you've got steel, you've got damaged, you've got whatever, like locations, like it's like 60,000 photos, 70,000. Oh. And other folders just for like certain areas where I document really? the culture. I mean, that's like super... Hard work. Yeah. Once a month, I'll be on there for hours, like just categorizing a couple thousand photos. Not the same. Well, couple. That, I mean, like, yeah. Not I, saying that's all I was like. I'll be done two thousand dubs. Oh, you're like talking that. about just like graph in general. Yeah, but wow. But like fifty percent of that will be from my crew. So there's a tag on there, whatever. It's I'll save on. it. But 
I, I don't give a shit about Instagram. It's not for like, oh, here's a photo. No, 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 no. Let's get 20 likes. That doesn't yeah, mean yeah. anything. It means it's bullshit. I'm thinking 20 years down the line, when that's all done and dusted, and people are like, oh, I remember the 2000s or the 90s mm-hmm. or whatever, and there's no history. Then bang, 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 bang. There's there's 10,000 photos. So what I'm trying to do now is document a culture. Yeah. I'm trying to capture time. That's beautiful. And, I love that. And like, you might get a little drunk tag like that. You never see it again. And then in 10 years' time, like, everything's buffed. There's, there's no history. Mm. And like, oh, but he was up. And it's like, well, where's your proof? I was like, well, here we go. Here's a million photos for you. Yeah, well, that's you know? just beautiful. I was just thinking of you just tagging up. If you're not uh, watching and listening, uh, Avia has just put up a don. As you, as you were putting up the tag, I was thinking to myself, man, that's, that's technically come all the way from Australia. That's something else, isn't it? Yeah. Half the tags you see as well will be wonky drunk tags as well. Really? Like, yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. But... I don't care, man. It's up like, and that's how I see things as well. Yeah, some of my tags are shit, but it's just they're sneaky, mm. you know. But like, if I want to, if and the way I see things as well, like, if, if people want to challenge, like, let's go to a war, I'll do a wild style, yeah, I'll burn someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, not saying I'm better than anyone, and that's a whole other thing as well. Just don't like, there's always man. someone better. There's always someone better hand style. Someone's more up with you. Someone that's cleaner than you. Someone that does train. Someone that's yeah. all over the world. No one's better than no one. It's just the work you put in. Yeah, yeah, Be yeah, humble, yeah. but know your worth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you, know I mean? I, I, you can put that exercise into any practice of life. It's super important. People have got lives and you don't know what they're going through and shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, and in the same way with graph, it's like you don't know what extent they had to do to get that piece and get that reach. And like some of the wonky tags that you may have done, I mean, that doesn't compare to like your wild styles, but they're all done in different circumstances for different reasons. It's a reasons. story. And that's another reason I document it. Because like little things like that I was trying to tell one of my kids the other day is uh, we had Alone and Zest rock up at the jam. Yeah, nice. Alone's not painting in 20 years. Mm. I was like, you have to get your name on that wall. And my brother, he writes as well, one of my other brothers, um, get your name on the wall. He's like, oh, it's 20 year old years. I haven't done it since the night. He's like, don't give a shit, get your name up. Because that's history. Someone's going to walk past and like, hold up. I, I, I remember that name years yeah, ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and this is a, a beauty about Graphia. Every time you see one tag, like, if you're oblivious to graph, you don't know what it means. But mm-hmm. once you know what it is, that tag is a person. That crew next to it is a, is a crew. There's it's a true. story behind every word yeah. you see. And then it's like, okay, mm-hmm. why is he hitting up that crew today? Why is he with that person? Why mm-hmm. Say say Avi and T's were together. <clears throat> like, why are they together? Yeah, 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 totally. And then each person has their own story and their Without own history. Without question. You know? Um, and then you go to rest in peace things. That's another beauty about graph. Yeah. Somebody dies, but you're keeping that, that spirit alive. Yeah. You know, and in 20 years' time, you know, bang, there's another one. That's the beauty of Graph, bro. Like, um, the in-stories, the uh, urban myth, the the legends, the people that are active now and, you know, just just the backstory of everything. This is why podcasts just live on because mm. there's always new, you know, surfacings of stories and things and scenarios. And if you, it, the writing is deeper than just on the wall, like you say, if you yeah. know, what's in the crew, what's behind the crew, what made this piece happen? And again, yeah. Shit like that is crazy. And again, like, people that are killing now, like, I, I see everything, so I rate them. But you're only king of New York for five five minutes or something, mm. and I said, same as London, you can kill it, and then it gets buffed, and mm. it's just a raise forever, you know? So every name is a story, mm. document mm. it. Um, and everyone's a person behind it, you know? Yeah. Not everyone's an arsehole. Um, yeah. I think, that, and again, just referring to this podcast is like, I think it, it humanises to a certain degree, which can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. I think a lot of people that watch this, they, they like people sitting with the lions, mm. but they don't necessarily want to sit with the lion. I think yeah. people get the mis, mis, um, misconception of graph writers. Like they, they, they aren't human. They're just wild, like, yeah. wild, you know. It's, and, just normal guys. Just normal we're guys. Ordinary right? people. We've got families, we've got kids. Mm. Some of them have like, really good jobs, are uh, really professional. But no, we've got this little secret mm. underworld like side to us. It's two, we literally live two lives. Mm. Oh, and don't get me wrong, there are some wild, you know, there's some wild ones yeah, out there. Um, and some proper wicked people out there as well, you know. Yeah, I just want to quickly say as well, like, um, I'll give a shout out to Daz on the F24 as well. Uh, 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 yes. Um, what I love about his ones, he doesn't do it anymore, but he, he digs deep to the person behind yeah, it. Yeah. I listen to his podcasts, and obviously I listen to all of yours, it made me think about my own life. I thought, if you were in a situation writing a book or something on yourself, how would you analyse what mm. story would you tell? And it's good for graphs. So mm. you know, maybe guys listen to this and like, right, what's your journey in life? Mm. 
Mm. Every single and it's another thing about graph is every name is important. Every mm. person's important. And um, so I got my mind goes a bit. No, no, no. Yeah. I love F twenty four as well. Big up does and you know let's I miss just, it. I miss let's it. just say we're like we have a tag vids old school guy. Yeah. Yeah, my guy. Yeah. So you see that name come up. The way I see things is um, like an analogy is like graph is like music music industry. Mm. Yeah. So let's just use his name for example. He came out and had a one hit wonder back in ninety eight. Then he's gone forever. Yeah, but that during whoever was around at that time, that played a part of their journey in life. Mm. Then then you'll hear that song again 20 years later, like, oh my God, it, it, it anchors you back to that moment. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so they, they yeah. still release a new song, like whoever you want to use. Like they made a new song, it's like, I'm getting it just because I love yeah. that person. So in a roundabout way, what I'm saying is, if you look at Graph, like the music industry, like every, every tag you see is a new song by the artist. Yes. Yeah. God, I love so you. You've got, you got, you got, you got the big ones coming out, like dropping these albums and there's the collaborations and all that mm. kind of shit. So if you look at Graph like you do music, celebrate it. Every word counts, every name counts. Every Where, piece no counts. Matter how smart, yeah, no, like you might hear a song when you're like 15 and it's the best song in the world and it sold no records. Mm. But it's important to your story, your life. Mm. Same goes for Graph. Like you, you grew up seeing that shit. Come mm. back 20, 30 years and it's like, you know what, that's a part of my journey. So mm. every single tag should be documented, it should be celebrated. Uh, and this is why like, we're on these podcasts now. Mm. It's like, it's a 20, for me, it's a 24 year crime wave. I can't be doing this shit forever. I can't be risking my family's lives and getting deported and all that kind of shit. So rather than getting this with the criminology side, the criminal side of things, I'm doing it to just drop mad pieces and develop my style mm. and like connect with people throughout the world and my friends and just keep that that movement going, celebrate mm. the culture. And, and again, I'm, I don't care about now. I'm looking at 20 years down the line. Mm. I'm, I want to build something bigger than, oh, they're, they're not, and again, people watch this, they're not relevant. Who are they on this on this thingy? I don't give a fuck. No, no, no. You know, no, like, no, 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 no. Because no, 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 you haven't no, been no. writing in London for the last six months, you're not relevant. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah but yeah. when you've got 20 years history, 25, 30 years, wh yeah. whoever you are, yeah. that's no longer relevant. It's all about the story. Because if you... How are you going to develop? How are you going to learn? How are you going to advance if the stories that helped shape a scene aren't being recognised? Yeah, it's yeah. really important to to celebrate the dons, whether it was five years ago or fifty. It's yeah. like so important. Same with music. Say like Rakim brought a song out. Like, oh, why is he on here? He's not relevant. Yeah, it's like yeah, they smashed it. Like yeah. they influenced other people. Yeah. They're a part of the, the bigger picture. Big time. So celebrate everyone. Yeah, big time, big time. Um, I don't get that sense at all through Avia, man. Like, AS as a crew is, like you say, it's a, it's it's almost like a a a a a, 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 like well, a business. How yeah, I it's, it. a, it's a, yeah, it's structurally it's Austin, built like that. Yeah, we're still doing it. Yeah, we're still like I said, it's the longevity and. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not smashing the lines anymore. I can do it, mm. and that's another thing as well. Like, I'm driving to and from work, and I'm seeing hundreds of spots. Mm. I was like, ah, oh, that's to get on there, and it, the train dies. Does it chew into your soul of thinking, oh god, if I was, you know? No, I, I can go do it right now. I've done one. I was drunk once, and I just went out broad daylight, just like painting the motorway, just in a dump. People walking past me, and, but it's like, so I, I know what I'm capable of. Yeah, can I ask you about that? Because th there certainly is this, especially after a couple of brews and like. Something like a, a location spot that you've seen maybe, this is like the fourth or fifth time over the course of two months, where you've walked past it and you're like, I've had enough of looking at it. It's going to drive me mad. Mm. I'm going to fucking go and sort this out right now. Yeah. That happens, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. Like, it's so impulsive and you, the need to do it. Even today, like, as well, like... Like I said, don't buy much anymore. I'm in London, I'm getting a two, few cheeky tags up. It's just got to be done. And yeah. I think when you're older... When you're younger, you're worried about getting caught. Someone calling the police. But when you're older, like, don't give a fuck. Someone says something to you, like, what's your problem? Like, yeah, because you're older and wiser. You're a big man now. No one's gonna fuck with you. Yeah. So you do have these these moments, but at the same time, there's heavier consequences now. Mm. So if you want, we could jump to other stories. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Let's I, find. Let's find these things that contribute to consequences. Let's go. Right. So, like I said we can jump all over the place, but the reason I don't do much legals anymore, yeah, mm. um, we'll go back roughly five years. Me and the family on a little um, went on a little trip down for New Year's. Mm. Me and my boy uh, Sue came down to me. Uh, as a family uh, weekend for New Year's, uh, we decided we want to wake up something new every New Year's, so mm. a, a great memory. And uh, I thought we'll go hit this little spot, mm. uh, which I hit a few years before, just to do a quick dub up there. And um, it was dead, like quiet town. 
and the next minute, bloody flashing lights and everything, they were doing a stakeout for a burglary. And we didn't even do anything yet. Uh, the place got robbed four days in a row. So I run and I tripped, and this fat guy jumped on top of me, and I thought, well, actually, I start swinging. And I thought, hold on, I've not done anything yet. Yeah, and then, also, and then I thought, if I run, I'm running for like two miles down the road. <clears throat> for what? I've not done anything. So I thought, now play it really cool, like play it smart, mm. otherwise you'll be fighting people, and like, I'm on a family trip. So he's like, I'll call the police, I'll call the police, I've done fuck all. My other mate got away. And then uh, my family drove down and they saw me pinned down on the train tracks. <gasps> like literally they're right next to me and the little kids crying in the back and I was like, oh, what's happened to daddy? And I'm getting arrested and all that shit. So I said, like, I've done fuck all wrong. I had all paint on me. And I had my camera on, I couldn't get my gun my camera on my, or something like that, stalled it out. Um, and the police were like, why are you fucking, like, why are you here kind of thing? Yeah, and then yeah. I stalled it out um, and I had a word with the police and they'll go for my phone. Again, everything's on your phone. Like, it, like, Clear your phone out if you're going out doing illegal shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got pulled up and that, and the police were just looking at me like, you're a grown-ass man, why are you getting arrested on train tracks? Like, paint on you. But like I said, I, I always have a good alibi. Why I'm in the air, why I've got paint on me, blah, blah, blah. But um, the police harassed me for like five months. Really? Yeah, they're rocking up at my house. Do you know these graphers and all that shit? I was like, why are you coming to my house? My girl's running a business here. Yeah. And there's police at my house. So, um, so yeah. one move can create this, this yeah. snowball of bullshit. And this was like four or five hours drive from my house. Wow. It was like another town. And I was saying, oh, you've got to come to court. So I had to take time off work, take a whole day driving down, like a hotel and all that kind of shit, mm. go in and say, oh, is your name so-and-so? Cool. I come back to court another day. I was like, why don't you just send me a letter or a text? Yeah. So I went on for months and that, and then they weren't having none of it. You're like, oh, wrong place, wrong time. Yeah, of course you go here. I was like, how am I guilty? I was walking down the street with a photographer. I had paint on me because it was in my bag. I was trying to get commissions earlier that day. I just didn't want to leave the, the paint in the car with the Sounds kids. Sounds legit. Yeah, down a dark alleyway and train tracks late at night, you know. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> but yeah, long story short, I got away with it in the end. But five months. But what pissed me off, yeah, this is graph is like, you're selfish. You, you don't give a shit. You're, you're a rebel. You're destructive. Mm. It's a great outlet. But you cross the line, you fuck my family. So now it's war. Mm. You know, it's personal now. Yeah. Mm. So I can do what I want. And it, it, like I said, we live very two separate lives. But as soon as you start fucking my family, mm. I ain't playing games no more. Mm. Um, so they witnessed their big, strong dad held down on the floor. I mean, of course I could have got out of it and could have mm. beat the guys up. But it's like, like, be smart, make smart decisions. Yeah. Um, oh, man, that's so a, from that's then on, must be a compromise in your head at the time. Yeah, then. my little kids looking up to me, like, pinned down. Was like, And just the embarrassment, my girl that hated me at the moment, I was like, fuck, what have you done? You know what I mean? Um, so from that, from then on, I was like, I'm not risking getting caught or mm. I'm gonna, where it's going to interfere with my family. Yeah. So I, I want to go out and smash shit. Like I see hundreds of spots everywhere. I can I can go out and kill Perth right now. Mm. I can just go out one night and do 100 dubs, like just destroy it. But then for what? The scene don't give a shit. Yeah. And that's another thing you get older. No one cares. Graffiti is trying to impress people you don't know, <laughs> who don't even like you, mm. don't even give a shit about you. For what? You get nothing out of it. They don't even care. You might get a little flame on your Instagram. That doesn't mean anything. Because when it comes down to it, no, no one's there for you. So why are you doing it? But people are like, flames, that's sick. And it's like, oh, man, those letters, come on, a five-year-old can do that. I'm not cut, trying to cuss people, but like, if you're writing for 30 years, come on, get some basic letter structure. So what's the psychology of people that put the flames up when it's, it's not to a standard that even they, they're happy with? Respect through fear rather than respect, respect for the quality. Interesting. Uh, it goes back to when we were younger, yeah? Graph was full of beef. Yeah, everyone has to be a bad man. You run the lines and, like, it might kick off or mm. people try and go and robbing people, mugging people. So you've got to have your back up. Um, and there's certain people... And I've had I've run-ins with some big writers and it's like, well, I'll get so-and-so and so-and-so. And, so, and it's like, you could be anywhere in London and then you might be spotted. And it's like, you might be getting to, like, jumps by people and I, I've been jumped by two crews That's, like I said I've got a million stories one time um, I'll jump around because there's so much yeah you know? yeah yeah keep it moving one time uh, I was on a, on a bus I took these two um, just like local writers on a train H.A.R. crew small time right next minute they're telling everyone they robbed and beat me up I was like what the where, where did this story come from, come from right. and this is a regular thing in the graph people chat pure shit okay then I'm on the bus with six of them and they'll rush me and I'm fighting six guys by myself. My two mates just sat there doing nothing. And I go downstairs and that, and then one guy is like, oh, what happened, mate? You all right? Yeah, yeah, Oh, that's fucked up what they did. I was like, yeah, yeah. And another guy comes downstairs. 
I'm going to stab you, you fucking pussy. Like, wait, what, go outside. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Ugh. And, I, and, and I was in a stage of my life where I, I just didn't want the drama because I, like, I had some stuff going on. So now I just, like, I just had enough. I was like, okay. Bang. Knocked him out cold. And then the guy who was being nice to me was his friend. So he's like, so I bang. Knocked him out cold. So two of them on the floor. Next to me, a bloody foot in my face. And then it's like the rest of them all rushing me. So I just held onto the bars. Mortal combat. anyone that come to me, just their feet, I was just booting anyone in the face that got next to me. Then they're going, oh, we're going to stab you up and all that shit. And then, um, yeah, police never even came in the end. They actually, we wait 20 minutes just so I can get out of there. I don't be like stabbed up. And the police, uh, we phone them up, because what's going on? They're like, oh, uh, we thought it'd be over by now. That was, so that's why they never showed up. Wow. You know what I mean? Shot when they want and there's other stories as well, like at Carnival as well. Like a lot of people know this. Um, I had a beef with one few young guys. Um, again, me, I don't start no trouble. I never bully no one. I don't rob people. But people like to test you in graph, and they always try. They'll line you up like, watch when I see you. Blah blah blah. You say more shit, and you, you catch them by themselves, smack them up a bit, then shake the hand afterwards. Say, all right, it's done. But there's rumours at the carnival. Yeah, I had about twelve of them circle me. And uh, one of the main guys wouldn't get near me because he was scared because I already beat the fuck out of him. Someone come from behind me with a 600 mil, smacked me on the eye from behind. What? Yeah, split my eye open. Like a suck, little coward, sucker punch. And they were throwing stuff at me. There wasn't one hit, yeah? And then one of them got my back, so I chased the guy through the state, come back out. Obviously, because he got me from behind my eye, I was bleeding. Yeah, bleeding pretty hard, I imagine. Uh, yeah, it's all right. And then, again, two of my boys just stood there. Um, yeah, so there was that. And then I thought, fuck this, you want a weapon? I'll get a weapon. So I whipped out a bottle and then they all disappeared. But anyway, that's that's all that happened. Mm. There wasn't one punch. But then there's rumours going around London. I got stabbed, I got robbed, I was mixed race and all that shit. And then once you once you get the reputation, I'm like, oh, he got done and he must be a pussy. Next minute, all these young guys like start taking me out. I'm like, what the fuck? It's a never-ending cycle. So then I've got to deal with these guys. Wow. And then I come on a train. So I'm just trying to fit in a few stories. No, 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 no. So, you're talking 24 yeah, yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was, sounds like it was a while ago. When was this? Yeah, when this is like, I don't know, 09. That one other one was oh, probably uh, 02 or so. Oh, okay, wow. And then I'm, I'm jumping on the train and I see this uh, one little young guy I took out uh, to do a freight. Mm. Um, and he was with this other guy. And I was, I was in my like work clothes. I had a nice shirt on, looking real slick. And then... Um, this guy's like all been round in the train. He's like, I'm an undergun raver. Fuck it, you Me and Michael, all that bullshit. And he didn't know who I was. So I just stood up to him like right in his face. I was like, you fucking what? And, he, and he's like, what? Like, he shit himself. He's like, I'm fucking AB little prick. He's like, ooh. Like, wow. Then, it's so uncanny that these circumstances, they happen. It's like, how are you in the same place? It, I, that's the other thing that Graffa noticed is like, the city suddenly becomes very small. Yeah. And these kind of, you know, these kind of moments happen. At the blink of an eye, you're in, you know, you bump into someone or something. You know what It happens. I come back from work. Um, again, I don't want to, like, shame people. There's another writer. There was a part, they used to phone me up and harass me. I'm at work, like, phone him up. They got my number, all giggling down the phone. I recognise his phone, his voice. I see him on the train. I was coming back from a date with some woman. It was a packed train. I see him, I was like, all right, bang, gave him a smack. And then, like, had a handprint on his face for a whole day, 24 hours, apparently. Really? But stuff like that. But then, and there's, I always see a few of them, and then you catch them by themselves, and it's just like you, you just break a nose or something. But then shake hands after. I was like, yeah. all right, I'm a bigger man than you. Don't be a prick. Like, you know. Um, but it has an effect. Like, as soon as people have a little way of, they think they can take the piss out of you, then they all want to jump on. Um, and then they'll tell their friends, and then oh, it's a vicious cycle. <sighs> but like, I'm not a violent person, but like, there's, there's a lot of stories where like you, you're put in a situation, you know, you have to stand up for yourself. Another time I come back and one of those guys I had beef with, he was with a few, mm -hmm. like, SBDDS and, like, mm -hmm. I'm cool with them. Mm -hmm. But the ones, that the dodgy ones, as many people know, once they're in a, once they're in a pack, they're out on a robin spree, they're on a fighting spree, they're on a crime wave. Um, well, I know you come to mention it. I've talked to a few. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, these like that. Yeah. yeah, another time I saw a load of them and I got off the train after work and I was like, it's working. And I was like, and then the one of the guys I battered, he was with all the big boys. So I thought, oh, he's going to try and impress himself now. So I was like, oh, I can't deal with this. So I just go through the train station, just jump on the back of the train, just surf down it. See you later, mate. I was like, I just, I just don't want to, not that you're running away because you're, you're scared. It's just like, I'm not finishing work and I've got to fight like eight guys. Mm. We've probably got weapons. It's like, come on, man. I'm, I just finished work. Does that play heavy on the heart? I mean, after a while, man, like, 
It's just that's a side job, you know. And if you're pulling girls, that's another job. If you're doing your day job, that's another job. You can't. You just after a while, it's just emotional baggage, isn't it? Oh, look at my face, man. My, my hair's run away from my face. My my skin's hanging down like <laughs> a bloody old ball bag. <laughs> you would have noticed the attractiveness in this man with the pixelation it does not do him justice, as I always say to some of my favourite writers. Yo, oh. but no, it, it does. It's, it gives you a sense of paranoia because mm. you could be anywhere in London and you're certain people have beef with, and it's like, ah, oh, just like that, you can be fine a whole crew of them by yourself. You know, so it does, there's always that that sense and it has a long-term effect because I'll be with a family and I'm in cent- like in the city centre with the kids and all that. Mm. Because you're your streetwise, like, that guy there, he's up to no good. That guy there, like, he's robbing something. They're going to kick off. And like, we're, a, we're having a meal with the kids and stuff. Like, I'm sorry, I, I can't not see that. Really? You know, you it, it's almost like they live kind it, of it, shit. Yeah. Like, they live, <laughs> like it, it takes away the joy from life because... You're streetwise and you're aware of all the shit around you. It's like you can smell it. You know what I mean? So you just want to have a nice family up, but you can't unsee what you know. You can't unlearn it. You know, you're aware of your surroundings and it's like, it, like it causes problems. Um, and again, long term, I think it, it could cause mental health issues. I hate using that word because everyone uses mental health mm. as an excuse, mm. but everyone suffers, everyone's mm. got problems. Um, yeah, I know you've you've experienced a lot of men- mental health. Uh, quote, quote, you want to quote. go down that road? Yeah, let's go down that road. All right. Very um, keen to discuss that. Where should we start? And again, I don't want to use this, because people use that, that victim mentality where they're like, oh, I've got mental health. And mm. like, everyone's accountable for their own actions. No matter how fucked up your life is, it's down to you to how you process it, how you handle it. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, all right. there's a few things that I, I was going to bring up that I just think people need to talk about because mm-hmm. um, this lifestyle is it's a very destructive lifestyle um, we can all get smashed and we all used to steal stuff and whatever else um, but when you look up to these people stood at now it's like they're not happy like you look at these guys look, like stabbing each other and all that stuff mm-hmm. and they idolise these gangsters and that's like they're not happy people why are you idolising mm-hmm. them mm-hmm. they're not going anywhere alright um, so where should we start alright so a couple of things that uh, have an impact on my life. That's what I'll talk about. Mm, please. Um, I'll jump to one story quickly and then we'll go into that story. Because I've Let's got a lot it. of stuff that's... Actually, two really quick ones, yeah? Because yeah, there's a lot of impacts that uh, change my route in life. Mm. All right, so back in 2000, I had my little brother and me. He would have been about six. And there was this local crackhead. He started writing sub. I'm like, sub? Come on. Mm. Um, and he went over me, so I pulled him up and that, and then, long story short, he pulled a knife out of me, and then my little brother on the BMX, I was close to take him out, pulled a knife out, the only little thing, but he was swinging at me, so I was like, all right, so this is how we're going down. So I went off, and before we even go, I'm not a violent person, I've always been a very peaceful person. Mm -hmm. When you cross a line, things are different. So in my head, I already planned this out. I was going to cut all his fingers off, Carve my name in his forehead, beat him with a pole, and then we're all gonna go rush him in front of the train tracks. This was what was going down. Mm. And then um I was looking for him and then I saw my mum and she said, oh, What the fuck are you crazy? Like you're gonna go in a mental war for 20 years. So I was like, all right, let's just go have a word with him then. And he was hiding at another friend's house and had this chopper on me, like hiding behind my back. And as soon as I saw his face, his face it was going through his face. But then like she had to talk me that next day, and because I was uh, and this is probably why kids stab each other now. It was like you're in this little rage where you don't give a fuck, you disrespect me, blah, 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 you've got to take care of the consequences. But then I really thought about it. I thought, 20 years in a, in a prison or a mental ward because some piece of shit, like, fuck that guy. So um, I decided to step away from yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, you're still a victim if you, you know, you're as much a victim for, for doing it because you'll let the rage get to you yeah. and this person. That... My life will be ruined. Yeah. So I took a step back. And that's why a lot of beefs I've had is like, I'll take a step back. And then people think, oh, he's a pussy. And they, they, they'll just antagonise you and keep pushing and pushing. Mm. So I took a step back from that and then just let that one go. He, the guy didn't remember. He was a crackhead. But um, So from then on, yeah, like, I'm, I'm not going to risk my life over a scumbag. Mm. So if I ever walked away from beef, it's not that I can't handle myself. It's just I just don't want to make stupid just decisions. Deal with it, yeah. The next one after that, um, I was in Scotland and um, I just, it was a dodgy cousin. Turned out he'd done a um, sexual assault on a family member. Right. Um, so we were we like we lived with me and everything. So we went round there, 
and um, he was crying, so I knew he'd done it. Because it was a really violent... It was like a Taekwondo black belt sensei, alcoholic. Oh, shit. So, oh. so, and it, so it kicked off. I bottled him and then I battered the fuck out of him. The white couch was red. I gave him about 50 hits in 20 seconds. My other cousin who wanted to kill him dragged me away. And then we got around to my house. It was around the corner. And my mum was just saying that just before that, he dragged my mum and my other cousin's pregnant girlfriend across the road by the hair. I was like, I can't, I can't go around there. But also, when we drove round, my sister crashed into the lamppost. The lamppost smashed down. Explosions everywhere. I was like, welcome to the neighbourhood. Like, it, was like a, it was like a movie. And then she went round there and started fucking beating him with her high heels. And I was like, I can't, I need to kill him. And then we called the police and then um, we ended up all getting charged for it. And then, because uh, it was assault. And yeah. they, they charged me with attempted murder at first. Mm. And then we explained it, and then they dropped it to assault with serious injuries. And then, um, yeah, then, like, whatever, a couple months later, I get a knock on the door, like, oh, by the way, can you come to the station? We just want to talk with you. I, uh, and then, bang, I was in a cell for three days. I was like, for what? I had to sleep on the floor for three days, freezing, no contact, nothing. Ugh. And I go into uh, wow. Monday morning, because, oh, because you got caught on Monday, but they're, they're shut. So, all right, I'll come in Monday. No, you have to stay here. It was fucked up. And then um, I go to this court and I'm in a cell the size of this room. Yeah. 13 guys in a room. Like all these criminals. Uh, and this is in Scotland. So, you know, uh. They're nuts. And then eventually you get to court and goes, are oh, you so-and-so? You promised not to go near the other guy. You got caught. Yeah, cool. All right, you can go. So the three days in a cell just to say you've got caught one day. And eventually when the court case wow. came, the guy, he was there for some other reason... And they're, they're trying to sentence me. He said, you can get up to five years in prison. And he's like laughing through the window, like, ah, you fucking prick. Oh, that. my God. Yeah, and I was like almost in tears. I was like, because in Scotland law, you can't talk. They just read a bit of paper. Like, oh, he went around there, he bottled him, and then he beat the shit out of him, tried to kill him. The end. And they're like, that's a serious offence. But I had no lawyer or nothing. You can't speak you on can't your defence. Justify what you They just read a bit of paper. I was like, five years in jail. You know what I mean? So I was like, fuck. So um, long story short, um, because of the circumstances, I got the maximum community service. And then we transferred to England, so lucky that kind of we yeah, got away yeah. with it. Um, so that was... Man, yeah. so that's that changed, mad. Yeah, that changed a lot of things. And then... Uh, oh, fuck, where, where was the next one? Mental health, wasn't it? Mm. All right, so, yeah, there's a lot of stories, but I'm open about it because they fuck your life up and no one talks, yeah? So, all right, ne- next one we'll jump to is... Um, uh, we haven't even talked about travelling either. Mm-hmm. Listen, yo. We can talk for your podcast, hours. brother. I am all fucking ears as the rest of them are. This is so right. insightfulness. Like, honestly, I, I, mean, I don't want to disrupt your flow. It sounds to me like there's a lot of airing going on here. And Well, this, I mean? is what, this is why people need to go to therapy. Therapy is 99% talking. Mm. You're just given an open space and it, it flows out like a volcano. Yeah. Like, you've got so much in there, but you just bottle inside and you just nod like, yeah, yeah, it's cool, it's cool, I'm all right. So it's a, it's a, you're given a platform where people can just get you off their chest. Mm-hmm. You know, so therapy is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll go briefly. Travelling is too much. Okay. Yeah. I went to travelling. I, like, I had to get out of the country. Um, I went to Australia and my life changed. Like, people, they were happy to see you. So coming from a craft background where, like, it's all shady and mm. like, you're just getting drunk mm. and all that shit. And like, oh, we miss you so much. Where have you been? And, like, long story short... One time I made like a hundred friends. Like you're just rolling around with like four of you getting drunk. Um, and it's girl, girls walking in the shops in like bikinis. Mm. And you're in paradise and you're hustling. The honeymoon shit. Oh, that is too much story, <laughs> but we hustled. We'd, I've slept on a bench, I've slept in farms, I've slept in a mansion. We'd bunk accommodation, we'd steal shit. We partied every day and we had no money. We're, we're in paradise, I've got jobs, I'm there. Whales and dolphins. You're living in paradise, like mm. on these exotic beaches, and you've got no money. Yeah. But it taught me a lesson. It's like there's better out there. You can yeah. you can live your dream. You so can where have you travelled? Where have you travelled? I've done quite a bit of Europe. Yeah, and that's a that's another mission, yeah. like a graph tour. Uh, that's a whole other story. Um, but mostly call that a hotel tour. It's a hotel tour. It's, it's a sofa surf tour. Oh, we stayed in a church really? in Poland and there's like the, the security had balaclavas on in the yard and everything. That's mad. Yeah, that's that's another story. But uh, yeah, it's mostly Australia, quite a bit of Asia. Um, I've been in lots of countries. 
but not enough. It's never enough. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, Australia, I've travelled everywhere. Like, ugh, it's too many stories. But it taught me that you can live the dream. If you get out, you can work anywhere, get a job anywhere, make money, make friends anywhere on the planet. Like, so it's good it, for it, mental health for that, massively. obviously. London, I was trapped. I was like, I need to get out of here before I go, mm. I will go jail because I'm going to do something stupid. Like, I'm going to keep jumping around. Yeah, this is fine. how my brain works. Yeah, it's all good. Wicked time in Australia. I met so Come many on. sick friends. And big up Fire. He's one that got me out there. Mm-hmm. He sold it to me on a Friday. Monday, ticket was booked. Wow. And I haven't paid my, my debt back to the bank. Fuck wow. Wow, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, I came back after the first, first year. Um, got caught right at the end. Uh, and uh, ended up paying. I had to do a bunk, and they were looking for me for like three days. And then um, ended up paying the next morning. <laughs> Left the country, and all the crew at the airport was the same company. Shitting myself. Got stranded in Asia with no money at all. Again, Fuck many that. other stories. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I come back. Had a reunion one day, and then um, just having a night out, and then something triggered me, and I was just like, "Fuck this." And I went nuts. I was running into shops, grabbing chairs, throwing them at cars, flying, kicking windows and doors, grabbing big weed. I was crying. I don't give a fuck about admitting that. I was crying. I was just like, angry. I was like, there's got to be more to life than this shit. I was so mm. angry. I was just smashing up everything. In my... I could see and the girls were just crying. I was like, what's wrong with you? You know, it was maybe it was like a little mental thing. Um, I was like, I need to get out. Mm. I have to go. I can't. I can't. It's too frustrating. You know? That's so, That's some... Um untapped emotional baggage there that perhaps just hadn't been was there something anything particular that was triggering you no you? no it's just I've always knew there's better in life but to live that life where you're working your ass off all the time yeah. and you're not getting anywhere you know there's, yeah, there's, so there's, there's got to be more that's right there. and there's a level of resistance oh, we all go through it I go through it we, we spoke about it briefly but when we are outside yeah. it's this resistance and I don't know where we don't know where it comes from is it in our own minds where this resistance lies because it, it, we're all quick to blame other people in our circumstances maybe there is resistance within those places as well it's quite hard to define where there's a hole in the, the circuitry therapy, therapy. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come to the next one we'll go to I'll done yeah, therapy yeah. we'll come to the therapy yeah so, um, okay, too many stories. Uh, last year, um, I went to suicide. I had to cut the guy down at work. And it was like so out of the blue. We had a really good man to man the night before. The guy just had whatever well, argument with his girlfriend or something. He didn't want to do it. Like, and I found, I was like, fuck, like, what the fuck, man? Why'd you do that? Like, it was horrible. I was like, why'd yeah. you do that? Like, he didn't want to do it. And the thing about suicide, it's, um, it's like murder. His life was stolen. Like, mm. it, it traumatized me. Um, his his life was stolen. He didn't. He shouldn't have been taken. Oh. And then my company didn't give a fuck. They were useless. And then I was in a shower. And then I was the only one staying on site. Oh my god. So oh my god. I had to process all this shit. And I phoned my my boss like. And then the boss there was being a prick. So I quit. I like fuck you. And then the big owner was like, No, I'm busy. He's like, Nah, you're fucking getting me on the next flight. So I got the next flight and I thought... I'm Where were you get... going? Where were you and where did you go to? I, I'll do... Five, it's called FIFO, where they fly you to jobs. Okay. Up and down the country. Okay. So I'm slowly getting there in life. Yeah. Hard work. But um, Wow. Yeah, you're able to travel now. You're in these yeah, you know, bigger yeah, jobs. Yeah. So many people watching this have these visions, have these thoughts. And like, they don't want to talk about it. And I'll see people online venting like, fuck this place. And everyone's like, oh, he's a miserable cunt. He's not. That, that guy's hurt. He's hurt. Mm. He just wants somebody to listen to and uh, to show him a bit of love. Mm. That's all it is. They just need to process all that shit. Mm. Um, but people don't see that. They just feel like he's a miserable cunt. Delete and block him. Like, yeah. it's like, ah, that guy's in pain, man. Well, if they're trolling in something like to that uh, nature, it's almost like they're, they're attacking their anger at something, somebody yeah. you. I've you done know? it a million times. If yeah. you know my, my old Facebook, which mm. we're not going to bait up, is I always have rants all the time. Yeah. And then uh, people just felt he's moaning. I was like, nah, like, something's not right here. Or I'll leave little code words. Yeah. Like, just a little line. And everyone's like, what the fuck does that mean? But then, for, that's me just like, I need to say something somewhere and it's just a, like a little a little hint. Yeah. yeah. But then no one gets yeah, it. Right. No one gets that. You, that. With men, you have to reach to them. And then they, straight away you'll be like, nah, I'm cool. Yeah. And that's the response. Like, that's right, I got it. I'll sort it out. You just have to just start a conversation. Yeah. 
Just start chatting. Like if anyone's listening out there and genuinely has these, you, oh, you give me a shout. Problems, yeah. Man. I'll talk to you. Definitely, I'll talk to you. There you go. I don't care who you are. Yeah, if you're struggling, I'll I'll chat. I'll chat to anyone. I'll I'll give you the time. Of and day. likewise, you know, I think this is a really important place to discuss this. Even if you're watching our comment below, do you know what I mean? Tell your tell your stories, your theories, your opinions, and if you're going through anything, you know, yeah, because super important. Suicide is is not the way out. Like you, you don't get another chance. Yeah. Like my life alone. Like if I had that thought years ago, I would never see the world. Like I'd never have my family here. Like there's so you're only on like chapter three. You have got another seven chapters in your life to go. Like you've not even got there yet. You just want all the shit to end. That's yeah. all it really is. And you, that's you just a conversation. It just takes a conversation. Yeah. You just want all the shit just to stop. That's all you want to do. Yeah. But there's ways of doing it. Like the power of talking is amazing. If you just talk to people, and then you have to really make. Smart decisions in life, like it's all about discipline. Uh, um, and there's there's ways. Uh, My life's transformed in the last year. All right, so I'm gonna jump because obviously it's gonna be night time and soon enough. <laughs> I keep talking. I got. I got to head up. You got some pieces to go and do. You know what I mean? All right. Got, got Glasgow to contend with. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna look, look up my boys. All right. So next next thing, yeah. I always wanted kids. Yeah. I had two miscarriages, and that destroyed me. Oh. And the thing is, when you lose a kid, yeah, yeah, yeah. you've got to look after your girl. And it's all about her. And you can't bring it up because you, you crush her. But what about the guy? The, mm. I'm just, I was destroyed. I was like, I've always wanted a child and my, my kid's dead. And mm. I don't go, people think, oh, it's the making of the, the counts or shut up. Mm. Like, every life is a miracle. It literally is a miracle. One in mm. a trillion chance for that yeah, life yeah, form. Yeah, yeah. If your kid dies, that's, it kills you. It kills yeah, yeah. a part of you, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So I had to live with that grief and I couldn't express it. And because it's a miscarriage, you don't know if it's a boy or a girl, you don't know what they look like. You've got all these feelings and there's there's no no outlet. The what ifs. There's nothing for a man to talk about. Like, I can't share it. Yeah. So you're living with that weight inside of you yeah. for so long. Um, and then uh, we got tested from a naturopath and they said I had 30% too much lead in my system. Too much lead. Yeah, and we've done a scan of my balls, my, my spunk or whatever. They were swimming in circles or deformed or whatever they were. Really? Years of drinking, years of painting. So all the fumes from the paint, all the drinking, it's messed them all up. So like 80 fumes night... Fumes from paint? Let's get... They're, they're full of them. lead. Yeah. Like even... I remember being at a day spot. I used to tell my little kid down there. was like a year old on my, on my shoulders to get a few tags and that. And I, I caught it. Like a guy just getting one little spray there. But then from a distance, there's a massive fog around of him. Yeah. Because only the sunlight showed me that. So it was actually invisible. So the fumes are everywhere around you even though you think you're just in that one little line. Mm. They, they're soaking up the atmosphere. So all the lead from the paint was in my system from all the years of getting up there. So 30%, and I've done another like nine years of mm. like probably 50 pieces a year. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a lot of paint. And I've done yeah. some commissions. So Not all outside, a lot inside as well, I guess. Yeah, inside I wear a mask. You have to yeah, wear a mask. Yeah, yeah. But even that, it still gets in. You wear the good mask. I take it off, my face is all blue and it's all everywhere. Yeah, you don't see it until you take the mask off, right? Snotting out rainbows. Um, wow. So anyway, we got tested and my girl had some issues. She got tested um, and bam, we got pregnant. I have a little boy, love of my life. Mm. Seven years old now. Yeah, so that changed my world. Like, as all the parents know, like, that saved my life to an extent. Like it saved our relationship. Um, Congratulations. Oh, he's, so, he's so, 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 so the general consensus here on this... Get checked. Get checked. Yeah, what are you thinking? Of? Like, just get a general health check. Because, um, we, like, women get checked all the time. Men never get checked. Yeah. Until, like, oh, you've had this thing, shit for 10 years you didn't know. For a lot of minutes. I should get checked now for other stuff. Yeah, but really? I'll be right. I'll wait till the pain goes away. Yeah, yeah. Um, and back to that subject, yeah. We are in Chicago a few years ago. And uh, we're having a great time, living up, had friends over, and um, had loads of drink, balling, like fucking $20 a drink and like shit, living up. And then I started being a bit of a dick towards the end. And then out of the blue, yeah, I just started crying. Uh, I was like, what the fuck? I was bawling my eyes out. I was like, fuck, I miss my kids. Mm. I never met them. So I don't give wow. a fuck. I'll be open about this. Five, no, it would have been... Yeah, maybe five years I was living with grief and had no outlet, no way to process it. Mm -hmm. But it's still in there. Like, mm -hmm. it hides inside you. And it's going to come out one way or another where it's good or bad. Mm -hmm. And usually it comes out really bad. Um, but that made me realise, it's like... And I had a conversation the other day about another subject I'll bring up. 
it's, it hides inside you. Have you learned about your body? There's three brains as well. That's another thing, your heart, your gut, and your brain. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Yeah. So, yeah, we all have grief inside us. We all have problems. Mm. You have to get rid of it. So after that suicide, I saw a, I spoke to a counsellor on the phone and it was just a way of getting out of your system mm. because I don't want to ruin everyone's Christmas. I went out into a kayak and um, it was a form of meditation. I just I needed peace away from mm. the world and process your thoughts and it, it gave me a bit of peace. Mm. Then also last year, just over a year ago, um, I was living with so much shit, like just adapting to a different way of life. Um, because you live in the destructive life for so long, yeah, and it's it's just quiet and peaceful. Mm. And a quote I heard recently is "Peace can kill you," <laughs> and I thought, what? And I thought about it. I thought, yeah, it can. When well, you're so used to such a high energy, high tempo, and destructive lifestyle, you always have an outlet. When the outlet stops, it's, you're hitting walls, mm. and all that shit just bounces back inside you. So there's no outlet. Echo chamber almost. Yeah. So for me, I had an implosive anger. So all my shit was going around in my head and my body and I had no outlet. I couldn't go get drunk, get smashed, like, yeah, fuck the world. It just had to stay in there. So uh, long story short, had some issues at home. I went out and um, I might as well just tell you the story. Yeah, I, I was in the back of a, a car, door open, guy started punching me in the face. I was like, what? Oh, fuck. Yeah, the guy dropped me off. I was like, what? For no reason at all. Literally no reason. Where was this? Our friend's friend was giving us a lift. I was just... Where was just, this? Perth. Like for no reason at all. I was, like, so I was like, get my phone. It's got my shit. I was like, grab my phone, take a few hits, yeah? Got out, like, I was fuming. I got out of that. Guy ran around and drove off. So like, you cunt. I was fuming. Like, blood in my eyes. Like, I've never had a black eye in my life, but I had blood in my eyes. Like, three, five, five, three shots in my head. So like, you wank up. I couldn't do nothing about it. He, he escaped. But what, what did he do it for? Because it's fucking loopy. I don't know. There's something wrong with him. So we went out that night, and I wasn't allowed in anywhere because I had a, like, blood in my eye. Mm. So it was like a ticking time bomb. It was like tick, 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 all these little things. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I went nuts. I went crazy. I was just screaming, roaring. I thought I was going to lose my kid pretty much because of the circumstances. Um, and I was roaring, my like, fuck, screaming, like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Everyone inside, like, right in the city centre, going, ah, like, roaring my eye, like, so, so much rage inside me. And I don't remember nothing. I was lucky I was on the phone to my mum at the time. She had it on like some video chat and she said I was, it was going off like 20, 25 minutes. I was shouting, screaming at people, fighting. Everyone, everyone walked past, I was fighting people. I was going nuts, going crazy. Took 20 policemen. They came and they looked after me. All I remember, and I was shouting, abusing the police. All I remember was one part, one part roaring, mm -hmm. then being lifted up into the back of a the van by like six of them. Been st strip searched. These are like one second flashbacks. Wow. Strip searched and then waking up in this clear cell, like opposite them. I thought, what the fuck? And then uh, I woke up and I was just like, I need a cuddle, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm man enough to admit that. I was like, I need a cuddle. So I went and sorted the shit out. And then from then I thought, nah, I'm, I'm getting therapy. So I joined this men's group. and But the powerful thing about that, that night, it was like, um, putting an antivirus in your body. Uh, everything was released. I had this mad outlet of all this shit I've been carrying for like 34 it's years. really pent up inside All of it, it. It doesn't go anywhere. It's hidden. In like, look at your body like a, a mad hotel. All these different chambers, all these different rooms. There's that one room that's locked. It's locked for a reason. That's, where the, that's the haunted room. That's got all this shit. So mm. there's always that little hidden room in your body where you hide all your, all your shit yeah. in your past. And you're like, yeah, 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 be a nice guy, be a nice guy, be a nice guy. And you just take, take, take all the bullshit. And eventually it's like, I ain't no prick. Mm. And then you just snap and you go fucking nuts. So anyway, yeah. So what that was, that was actually a mental breakdown. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Get it. And um, I had a, a reboot of the brain and I woke up the next day and I was just like, okay, um, I feel at peace now. And um, I joined a men's group. We do breath work, meditation. It has, even from now, like you still... Yeah, oh, yeah, a little bit. I've done yeah. it twice, 10-week yeah. courses. But it's a beautiful thing because they dig deep into the psychology behind yeah. things. Where does it come from? And to be honest, the breath work works amazing for everyone, but it hasn't really worked for me or the meditation, mm. but the rest of the stuff, the education. But uh, also what I do as well, I listen to motivational videos online and that. Um, yeah. There's some great ones like Les Brown, 
uh, Brenny Brown, Jordan Prince Peterson. CA. Is that Jordan Peterson? They had a couple of his things, but lately I need to look at that again. Mm. But uh, so check all these out. Google Will, that shit, Will you know? Smith on discipline. Mm. You listen to that one alone. Don't give up. It's got a picture of um, Rocky Balboa on the front. Of yeah, it. yeah, 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 yeah. Like real powerful words. Yeah, man. Arnold Schwarzenegger as well. He's yeah, got some great ones. And but they're, they're, it's sorry. really sorry for cutting you in. No, it's not like, at all, man. They're really powerful words. It's like because I saw Tony Robbins when I worked. I yeah. worked at Wembley when I was little. Nice. And that changed my life. Like it's like hearing such positive stuff you don't hear that in life where yeah, someone's yeah. encouraging you yeah, yeah. so that kind of made me who I am today as well it's like I know there's better out there Yeah. so I listen, listen to these things and you have to really make really smart decisions in life it's like I, I won't go to we call it bottle shops in Australia the off license <laughs> I won't go there anymore to no. buy alcohol unless it's a night out and we're staying in a hotel I'll buy something little I won't go again I just I've been buying myself like certain juices every day. Why is that? Why why the bottle? It's, it's discipline. Right. Hundred percent discipline for me, because mm. it's so easy to like oh I have a drink now and then next week oh, I have another one and then you buy a six pack mm. and then mm. it's uh, not like a drinking problem but it's for me it's discipline. I don't need to get drunk. I'm not going out pine like I used to. Mm. So mm. and I've been more firm with myself. Been really strict myself. I'm taking care of finances because that was another massive thing. Finances is like oh, oh, full shit. Yeah. The, the journey I've had as well, like I've been no work for like six months. I'll get no benefits. Mm. And I've got a massive mortgage. So if you're not paying those, where's the food coming from? Yeah. You know, uh, I've had a horrible journey financially with work and all that. Last two years, we're going good now. That's why I'm mm. here today, man. Yeah, baby. So this last year, I thought I'm taking care of my finances every week, putting some, so I've worked my ass off this year. As soon as the doors open, we're going to England. I don't give a fuck how mm -hmm. it happens. Got a loan. Cost us like $20,000 for this trip. Whereas before, I, I would probably make 10 grand a year if I was lucky. Mm -hmm. Not even that. But um, you Yo, should be so strict with on, yourself. Man. That's so, yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah. I, I get passionate about it. Like, you get angry about it. Um, it's because you're fighting for yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, I'm not, I'm not going down that road again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, like, you can be paralyzed. You're just lying down there. Like, you can't get up just because yeah. of depression. It's like, I can't. I can't, I can't do that What's anymore. What's the point? It's yeah. fucking shit. You get so angry about stuff and it's just, there's no hope. Um, and I've lived with that shit for years, mm. but no one knows. No one knew about it. It's all in my head. No one yeah. knows about it stuff unless you're my family. You see the consequences where I'm nitpicking and I'm moaning the dumbest shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You know? And you're hurting the ones you love because you're actually you're externalizing the thing that you really are internalizing in yourself. Yeah. Shit like that. Um, you are, you hit you hit walls, and there's only it's only when you go to the deepest recesses that you realize that there's no going back. I've got to sort this out. Yeah, you have to hit rock bottom to kind of like enough now. Yeah. I've got to do something and I'm not taking no for an answer of anyone. I don't care who comes to me. I don't care if you're a multi-millionaire, you're, please, this is my journey. You're mm. not fucking with that. Mm. And what I learned with that course as well, yeah, which might be a good bit of advice for everyone, you should all look into stuff like that because mm. it, it can change your life. For real. Um, most stuff comes from your childhood, whether you realise it or not. Mm. Um, and what you portray on others is really, like if you don't like something in someone, it's really something to do with what you don't like in yourself. Mm. Like, say the kids are like, why, are you, why aren't you finishing your food? Which a lot of parents would do. is like, and you're getting angry because they're not finishing their food. Like, mm. They're kids that don't know any better. But yeah. it's, it goes back to stages where like, I had to live in Melbourne for $20 for two weeks. I had to bunk accommodation. Mm. I had to live off sausages and plastic cheese for two weeks. So I, I've gone without food. Mm. You know, I've had to sleep on floors. I was home. I slept on a beach for a few days. I slept on a bench because I've had no money. Wow. But I made shit work. Mm. You keep getting up, you keep falling forward. You it's make the rock shit happen. Thing again. It's the rock bottom thing again, isn't it? Yeah, oh, I was just, I was balling, I was hustling. But like, I mean, I'm living on a beach. Mm. And we're friends, we're, we're getting drunk. You know, but it depends on the circumstances. But um, yeah, so you're getting angry at them for not finishing their food. It's like, it's not their fault. It's just because it goes back to your own stuff. And what I realised, um, I had a, a light bulb moment on that course. Um, the reason you get annoyed at certain triggers is like, well, you're not being heard. Mm. Which probably, that's probably graphers. You're mm. not seen. Mm. That's why we're right. We're not seen, we're not heard. We're the black sheep of the family. We just want to be loved and noticed and respected. Mm. But we're, we're in a shady world where no one goes a fuck about you. Yeah. So we go out there and force ourselves out. It was like, I'm here. I'm there, I'm everywhere. You're going to see me no matter what. Okay? I don't care if, if I'm invisible, you're going to know me because I'm important. I'm in, I'm special in my own little world. Mm. So that's what graph is, really. Yeah, so this light bulb moment, they're like, why, why do you feel like you're not being heard? 
I was like, what? Like, and you get pissed off. I was like, no, it's not that. They've just been a dick. But when you dig deeper, yeah, I, what I realised was like, all right, when was the last time you weren't heard? And you go back in your head, it's like, okay, it works. Somebody pissed me off. Or they won't listen to me. Or you're not being seen. And then you go back, like, when was before other jobs and college, mm. high school. And you all, re- and it you all keep comes going reverse the back. It's like, oh, when I was a kid, my upbringing. Mm. Like, you know, like you're the one out of the family that wasn't being heard or weren't, weren't getting all the attention. So much goes back to your childhood. And you think, wow, like, at my age now, my 40s, like, I'm getting all the little things because when you were seven, you weren't being heard. Like, you've got, you've got to really dig into yeah. your... You've got to be yourself. thinking about my whole life now. <laughs> like, yo! And really reach out to your friends because I've got a few friends that have lost kids in tragic circumstances mm. and everyone just thinks they're miserable. They're drinking too much, they're pining too much, they're on the coke or whatever they're doing. They're just, like, loose. Mm. Or they're angry all the time. It's like, no, nah, they're really hurt. Like, you, like... Then mm. you're like, I'll, I'll call them, I'll message them like out of the blue. My family's like, why wasn't your phone all the time? I was like, it's more than just like looking at pictures. Like I'm, I'm chatting to like, there's like a whole community here, and there's a whole other I'm thing. reaching out to people. I know they're they're struggling. I've struggled, so I know the pain. No one knows about it. So you have to step up and just reach out to your friends. And even if you get no response, just say it's cool, man. Like you know, mm. and just start the conversation, and then slowly it'll start coming out. Um, but yeah, just be there for each other, you know. It's amazing. Well, I hope everyone's taking notes on this and obviously, you know, rewind, play again. Super important information here. Um, and a lot of which has never been touched on on the podcast, bro. Thank you yeah, so hopefully. much, bro. Quickly, just before you wrap up, yeah. 2000s, like late 90s, the people are up because the internet and the books don't tell the, tell the truth. Mm. All right, so I'll just I'll just quickly give you a rundown of who was killing it in those days. Yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, yeah. All right, Northwest, yeah. You had um, obviously my crew, AS. You had Lost Boys, mm-hmm. Scanner Phase, LGL. Um, just beforehand, West, you had a VFL crew, SDF. Mm-hmm. Southwest, DT. They were all city. Hold tight, DT. All city, yeah. Come on. Thank God, fuck. They were all city. Vamp and Floors came up. Yeah, yeah. All city. They killed it, yeah. They were my kind of influence it was like nice. friendly competition like everywhere we went they were going and it was like back and forth nice. yeah, 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 yeah. southwest you had brs crew you had bombs um obviously got the dds's atg started smashing it you had its up north mm-hmm. east you had ot crew uh no one else was really doing anything then southeast you had um ps which is probably starting out a little mm-hmm. bit later you mm-hmm. had dpm obviously yes um ensa mood they were the main crew, so who else was there? There was a guy called Mock. Uh, mm, yeah, you had other Mark. guys with all city. You had like Cash, I think it was BMS or BRS, uh, A's, oh, yeah, Kissed. Yes. Um, Known? No, nah, he was earlier. Oh, he was yeah, Southeast, yeah. but he was earlier. He kind of stopped then. Um, there's so many names, but these are the names that were getting getting up mm. a lot. But like I can shout all the crews, like the ones in my name. But like LB, they were smashing it as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah these are like, oh, dude, you're taking me back there. Northern right? Line, it's you had area. Act and Slam, mm. uh, Necker as well. Yeah. Um, uh-huh. There's so so many writers, but I, uh, there's there's more which I'll probably think about later. Mm. But I think these people all need like a shout out because th- the early two thousand. They were killing it, the lines. Yeah, yeah, they were out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, they were doing it. Um, and there was more, but again, I'll, I'll, I'll remember later. Like, fuck, I should have mentioned them. They were like the most up. Yeah. But this, the, the, that alone, what you just like listed off there, you know, these are, again, these are, these are new shout outs. IT it? crew, West yeah, London. Of course, yeah. Um, oh, there's, there's only this lot. But it's important that they all get the mm. shout out because they were the ones killing it. And if you want later, I'll, I'll randomly come up with other ideas in my head. Also, um, I'm going to do a book as well. Nice. Just if people step up the game and start sending me shit. Son. Writers are lazy. Yeah, let's do but this. Two books. There's going to be one, it'll be a graph book, and one will be, I'm going to do it a bit different. I'll be a bit like a life story kind of thing on my journey, but it's a graph book, but I'll throw in like some of the tales we're telling we today. We need that then. We need so it's that a little here. bit different from what you see out there. It'll be stories that you can all relate to, mm. like the shoplifting, the bunking trains and the... And then the traveling, and then the the, the t- content we're talking about today, like real life stuff, you know. I think you know it, mm. there might be an audience out there for it. There fucking is because you everyone's know? got look, everyone goes through levels of trauma, you know, mental health of some form or another, yeah, at some time or another. Everyone does. Everyone. You haven't. You've had a privileged life. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 
you know. Or, what I mean? or you have no soul. But the thing, <laughs> thing about me, yeah, what people always say is you're the most underrated uh, writer in London. But I probably probably because I might piss people off because I say it how it is. I was like loud and drunk and that, but I, I like to say say it how it is and mm. don't tiptoe around things. So yeah. I'll be a bit blunt about certain things, whether you like to hear it or not. So see how we go. I do, I do <laughs> chat shit. I used to chat shit. But like, so where can they find out all this information about the book and stuff? What's the Instagram? It's our AS Crew official. There you go. Bang. That's the crew page. So there's just bits of everyone. There's like 6,000 odd photos on there for now, but that's only a, a bit of stuff. But, well, you know um, what to do. Go down there, check it out. You know what it yeah. is. And yeah. then it's in, it's in the works. I've got the photos. I've got the stories. Wow. I just need a little bit of collaboration from the boys to make it make it nice and neat. And it'll be the the crew one first. Um, again, it's just it's just for documentation. Yeah. It's just because, uh, like I said, every voice is valid. Everyone's important. Big time. Everyone's played a massive part in the history. Mm. So it's only right that we get the limelight for, for what we've done. And there's other crews that deserve their limelight, but no reason why we shouldn't get our limelight. Should you still be there? Everything everyone should be deserves handled and documented. Their own, yeah, everyone deserves their own thousand percent their own spotlight. Yeah. So there's that, and the other one will be just for fun. Vibes right uh, there. That vibes right there. Avia, my brother. <laughs> Thank you. It's been a pleasure. In the time you've come over here, short space of time, in and out, That's a you know. Snippet of the story. Twenty four years would be like crime wave, you know. Crazy. You, you gotta be there's there's too much, man. And I just really appreciate you taking the time out of your holiday and you know, and all the mixes that you're doing with the graph crews and everything. Chaos, chaos. This world, you know. Yeah. Shout out to everyone that came down the other day, yeah, everyone man. I know. All the crew, past and present. Yeah, jammed down at Trellick and it was immense. It was so good. It was busy, man. Yeah, man. And it was just great to connect and with And everyone's everybody. celebrating the culture that's not a prick, pretty much. <laughs> everyone's a vibe. It's all a vibe over here. Yeah, man. Keep, Keep doing up. what you're doing, man. Thank you, brother. It's the start of big things. Yeah. It's, we're moving. We're keeping it moving over here. Killer Killer Podcast. You know what it is? Allah in was out of fashion, all right? Sharing his care and tell a friend to tell a friend. Girls. Yeah, man. Hold tight. Be lucky, people. Don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Hey, yeah, come on, son. Nice one. Ooh, AS crew. Be lucky, people. Peace. We did it. We did. We did it. So many stories.